All right, if you watched the official Ditch the Bitch music video, you saw the part where I come on the scene as a rapper and I say, when things go wrong, she shames and blames me. Try to make me think that I'm going crazy. Well, the concept of shaming and blaming, uh, when I first heard about shame, I really didn't know what it was. And then I learned about it and I, I recognized that it was something that was showing up in my life, but I still didn't really understand it. And as I learned more about it, I actually ended up having kind of this shame about my shame, as if I thought I could complicate things anymore. And one of the main people I learned about the concept of shame from was is a woman by the name of Brene Brown, and she is actually a shame researcher. And the difference between guilt and shame, just in case, because um, I was actually confused by the two, is guilt is your judgment of yourself based on something that you did. Like, I ate a piece of cake, and I feel guilty about that piece of cake. Um, and shame would be judging yourself and saying who you're being based on that act. So I ate a piece of cake, therefore I am weak-willed, I'm a fat ass, whatever, fill in the blank, right? And so I want to talk to you specifically about something that I've struggled with my whole life, which was food shame. And the reason I'm talking about this today is a couple of things. First of all, I realized that uh, a lot of people actually struggle with it and, it, and I wasn't alone in it. And it was something that I had too much shame to talk about until recently. And the other thing is that I know personally that in this group there are a few women that are either tackling um, the body bitches or trying to achieve greater fitness and health for themselves or women that actually work in uh, the field helping people lose weight, get healthy and fit and all that stuff. So it's something that I, I knew was going to be really relevant. And so the concept of food shame for me and you might see, you'll probably be able to tell when I get a little uncomfortable or I'm feeling vulnerable because I've, I've never really talked about this. I didn't even recognize it was a, a thing in, until somewhat recently within the past few months. But I've mentioned before that uh, I, from a very young age, I thought that I was overweight, fat. I filled in the blank with a lot of things that I thought that that meant about me. But it started from when I was taken to Weight Watchers when I was seven. But as I was thinking a little bit deeper about it, I, I realized a couple other things happened. Um, this, and now sometimes I, when I say stuff, I'm like, am I, do I have a crazy family? Did this stuff happen with other people? But I don't know. Just like I had to forgive myself for the things I didn't know when I was a kid, m my brother probably has to forgive himself for this. But um, when I was younger, we had these, these things called Little Debbies, and they're um, like little snack cakes, um, chocolatey, frosting, stuff like that. And in my house, we were allowed to have one, and they came in packs of two, we were allowed to have one after we ate dinner. And so there was, in the Ellington household, there was the case of the missing little Debbies. And so every, I was denying it, everybody was denying it. And come to find out, like when we're all adults sitting around the dinner table, my brother, who's the youngest of my three brothers, two years older than I, admitted, like it wasn't a big deal, that he had actually eaten the extra cakes and put the wrappers under my mattress and then told my parents, hey, there's wrappers, she ate them, okay? So this is, I don't even know, I think back about this when I was really young, so it might have even been before Weight Watchers, I don't even know. But either way, from a very young age, I had this like food shame of where I found that until fairly recently, within the past couple years of my life, I, was, I would not eat in front of people. I was always judging, my, like every time I went to a restaurant with friends, I would order not necessarily based on what I wanted to eat, but what I thought would look like the food relationship that with myself that I wanted people to think I had. Um, when I dove into it, there was a lot of things going on that I wasn't conscious of until I was actually conscious of it. Um, but it manifested into, I ended up really not loving my body, but I also had this, so I had this, uh, not very delightful relationship with my body, but I had this really unhealthy relationship with food. And from a very young age, I actually turned to food as a comfort. And so based on what the webinar with Dax, I actually kind of made a, a list of little things and I found a pattern. And there was two different things. One we talked about was the pattern interrupt, which we called a bitch slap. The next part of it was going and finding your safe haven. Well, when I was going through the concept of the, the pattern interrupt, I, I wrote down things. This is what I wrote down. Breathing, music, poetry, go for a walk, and then I wrote the word comfort. Okay, And then under safe haven, um, I just wrote place that you feel safe. Okay, And then 
just the next place that my my mind went was food question mark was i using food as my pattern interrupt and was i using food as my safe haven i found that they were actually being used as both okay so where am i going with this based on what you say about yourself from a young age about anything I didn't even realize, like, I was focusing on my body issues and feeling better about my body and having a body that I was proud of. But I didn't even realize that I had my own separate issues with food that I had to deal with. And I had to reconcile what food is and what food isn't. So later on in my life, I had to actually reconcile. I'm numbing myself right now with food or sugar or any of those things. And that's not really what it's about. Now, we didn't go into it on the webinar, but Dax started to touch on the concept of this whole hormonal cascade that takes place when you're craving something, usually sugar related, but um, when you're, you're wanting to feel safe. And uh, without going too deep into it, it's when you are seeking this safety, this nurturing, you're, you're actually searching, seeking this hormone called oxytocin. And the highest dose of it actually takes place when you're a child and when you're receiving breast milk from your mom because milk maltose is actually a, a sugar so from a young age you cry you get a boob and some milk or a bottle you cry you get some boob you get some milk and you get some bottle a bottle and so part of it was yes your your body is craving that sugar but part of it was craving the, the hormone that was released oxytocin it's the comfort it's the safety hormone so from a young age i used th that relationship came into play and for some reason uh numbing i say numbing now but you know uh soothing or pacifying my my emotions with food from a young age was just my go-to and so i was using it not only as a pattern interrupt but as my safe haven okay when i think about food now i can see how it manifested into the effects being that i was overweight and didn't love my body and was really very food focused and food centric even when i was meticulously when i was doing well and, and eating healthy i was meticulously counting calories and, and judging every morsel of food i did or didn't eat and i just I, I didn't have this really healthy relationship with food until i actually focused on the relationship i had with food so for those that are having issues um, staying on track with their food for those that are having issues helping people to stay on track with their food um, a lot of whatever we're doing that we think is soothing us in general, mine, I just happened to mention food, but you might have something else. Um, is it being used in a way that serves you? So there's a lot of things we could use as a pattern interrupt or as a safe haven, but is it going to be something that's making you a better version of yourself? Is it bad or wrong that I use sugar or ice cream or anything like that as my pattern interrupt in my safe haven? No, there's nothing bad or wrong about it. And sometimes I might actually decide like, hey, I fancy some chocolate right now. But if I'm doing it because I either am trying to not feel the way I'm feeling right now and numb myself, or I'm doing it because I don't feel like I have the power not to do it, that's not making me a better version of myself. If I actively choose it, because I know it'll make me a better version of myself, that's a different fill in the blank for a pattern interrupt or a bitch slap and finding a safe haven. So where are you maybe numbing yourself, nurturing yourself a little too much um, or too much, but with something that's not serving your life? And um, I used food, food as an example, but where might you be having some shame issues that are, that are making you talk smack to yourself about yourself when these things show up and what can you say so that you can just once again pattern interrupt bitch slap it what is the truth what's really going on so lots of little rambles and I know I kind of went um, it, it touched on a few different things but hopefully you got whatever you got out of it and um, if you ever had any food shame issues I would love to hear about it because it's something that I find is so powerful to talk about because there's nothing to be ashamed of what you eat and and it's all a choice there's there's nothing to be ashamed of it and so um if anybody does have any questions about that it's something that i've dealt with um head on and i i love talking about this stuff so i'll sign out for right now and uh hope you got something delicious out of this video